Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984 and here we have two Macs, both are G4s. The one to the left is a 1999 version and the other one is a 2002. And the plan is to upgrade the left one with parts from the right one. Both are, both are systems that were going for scrap that I got for free. So we're gonna try to make something out of one of them, that's the plan. So this is the system I'm planning on upgrading. It also already has a uh, half uh, gigabyte of RAM, but we're gonna replace that. So this is the base model, it's a G4 clocked at 350 megahertz, so nothing special. The snow sick drive installed, since that's optional, and I kinda like that. Don't have to have that ugly piece in the front. It's an ATI Rage Pro 60 megabyte card. That's a DVD drive. So Really nothing special, it's a base model. So that's the system we're gonna build on and upgrade. In this one, we have an 800 G4 with no L3 cache. It's a, it's a very basic model if you don't count the educational one that was clocked even lower, 733. So it's an 800, no L3 cache. It's been upgraded with one gig of RAM at some point. It has a GeForce 2 MX. I expect from looking at serial number and from the from due to this CPU to this have a GeForce 3 or something like that, but this seems to be a card from a 2001 machine. I don't know if it's original or if Apple actually had something in between between the 2001 and 2002 quick servers that came in this configuration. So the plan is to take this CPU to the other system. It won't fit straight out of the box, but uh, we can make it work has been done before, so that's the plan to make this CPU work in the motherboard. And this graphics card, and that should be the easy part to just move that over. I also want to take some other parts from this case later, because I want this CPU cool to fit with, with the new this CPU in the other case, and that will interfere in both cases if you have the CPU over here and hit where the zip drive usually go. So the plan is actually to use these pieces of metal from this case, put the whole backside, and the, the, this piece that goes here, the front. And this is actually removable, unlike the other one from what I can see. So that we can just remove that once we moved all, all that over. And it's all riveted in place, so it should be fairly easy to undo the rivets, move the pieces between the cases. So we probably want to keep in the, the case anyway. We have to take it apart. So that's the basic plan for the systems. So this uh, this is the donor system for the other system. Before we even try to use another CPU from a new Mac or an upgrade CPU, we want to make sure the boot room version is 4.2.8. And uh, Apple has an update for that if you don't have that on your system. On the system we can see it's already updated to 4.2.8 so there's no need to flash the firmware. You can also see it's a 250 mega of GPU like I said, 1 mega of L2 cache, half a giga of RAM, 100 mega of bus. Also the other system has a 132 mega of bus so we're gonna have to change the multiplier on the CPU and that's, that can be done on the back side of it. So that's what we will have to do later. For upgrades, I want to use this, and uh, so SIL3112 controller card from the Cynix, it's their 2000 series. I got this used, and uh, I chose to buy a used one instead of the new ones you can get from China, because this one has a windbound ship that we should be able to flash. Uh, some I bought from China has even older EEPROMs that requires 12 volts. And can't be programmed by standard means with the, with the tools meant for these cards. So I have a firmware for OS X that should work so you can run OS X off this thing. And for drives I have a few SATA drives, old ones, 64 gigs, should work fine for both OS 9 and OS X and if we want to run Linux or something else. 
for OS9, we're probably going to need to use uh, this. So idea to sort, idea to sort adapter can be used either way. So the plan is to use this for the motherboard primary primary ID connection connector. And the reason is uh, this I only have a OS X firmware for this. It technically is a firmware that supports both, but you need to switch out the EEPROM for a special specific version of versions, there are a couple, and uh, to flash, and you have to do some mods on top of that. So I think this, since I have these, I think this, this is the easiest way. So that will work for OS 9, I think, we'll find out. And over here I have uh, what seems to be new old stock RAM for Mac. Should be working a PC too. There's nothing special about these, as far as I can tell. So these are 512 megabyte sticks of PC 133. So they will work in either Mac. But that's one reason I want to use the older system. It can take four of these rather than three. So we can have 1.5 in OS 9 because that's the limit. And in OS X we can have two gigs. So yeah, that's why I want to, one of the reasons I want to use the older case and system motherboard. Also I think that case looks better. We're ready to start disassembling the system for modifications. So we can add the other CPU, among other things. So, we start with some RAM removal. motherboard is out. I added some protection for the CPU socket. Uh, what we want to do to remove this ID connector, we could probably just do it out completely since it's for the optical drive and you can probably run that off this one. But I want to use this for my ID to set it up there. So I'm gonna come to need this or well, I don't want to keep it. But the thing is the other CPU will extend over here. And it sits lower than this connector, so you can't insert it in the socket. So you have to either remove this or extend it somehow and lower it. So that's my plan. I got a few of these brand new ID connectors. Now this one is obviously, obviously identical and won't work straight out of the box, but uh, I have these 
which are basically long pins you can make extensions with at the right angles so the plan is to remove this old one remove the pins from the new one and make new pins that insert from the bottom the first the, the row closest to us to me and up the rear pins here will still come out here but on the top side otherwise we can't get the the pins going where they need to go so the whole plan is to get half on the top half on the bottom so it will sit a little bit further out a bit further down so that's the plan but first we need to remove the old one We're adding some flux here so to help wick the holes and get them cleared. So I made these top and bottom pieces. Well, this goes on the top and that goes on the bottom. So I have to bend them and cut them to the right size. Oh. This one is off here but it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna solder these on the bottom first on the here and on the side. Otherwise I can't get to them later when this thing is on. So I have to get these first and then uh, the top row. Uh, now I want to obviously have this one back on here again, so we can actually have use of this. So the connector is on, and uh, before we even try it, I already checked. But if you do this, that I have done, mess with these. We do want to check for con make sure we don't have a short. Like the bottom left here and the top left. Make sure there's no short. And so on. Go over them. So let's see if we can actually see what I've done. That's a close up of the back side. And we flip it over. That's a close up of the top side. So now that when the ID connector is done, what I want to do is replace all the surface mounted electrolytic capacitors that you see all over here. And I have new ones. They 
are capacity wise the same but uh, some are higher rated on a, at a higher voltage but that's the, that doesn't really matter if the voltage needs to be the same or higher capacity is the same it should be the same so to remove these old ones you could disorder them but what I find to be safer and easier is to twist them off you twist them back and forth until they snap at the bottom of the leg leaving the pad intact on the board so we can start with these ones over here I like to use my fingers like this if possible but uh, often they are too small and fiddly so you just want to twist them a little bit back and forth and they will eventually snap like so so you can see twist the one off the legs the bottom of the leg is left on the pad and they broke off where they are bent that's the weak point that's why this method works quite well What I like to do is to thin one side and not the other one. And that's so it stays flush. Because I want to push this new one in here. Like so. Now it sits there and we can do the other side. One new caps and uh, modify ID connector so the system inspects together again CPU is mounted, RAM is mounted, power supply is connected so it should work now I hope let's push the button got a shine so that's good
And yes, the clock is out of date now because we removed the battery before, but that's fine. What I would like to do now is to test the optical drive, see if we still have an ID connector working. And we have something on the desk. And that is the content. So I think the ID mod worked. So then we can move on to the CPU mod to actually fit the new CPU. So the next thing to do is to modify the donor CPU, which I have here. It's the 800 MHz, 133 MHz bus CPU. So that is a multiplier of 6. So if I put it in the system, I want to use it in the sawtooth system, it will run at 600. And I like to have all my 800 megahertz. So at the back here, here we have this we have space for four resistors. They're one kilo ohm, so thousand ohms. So there's space one, two, three, and four, and we got a fifth one there we can ignore. So with this resistor here, that's multiply six, and we want a multiply of eight, and then we only have to add another one on top of it. This third slot up here. So that's what we're gonna do. Just in case. So that should be that for that mod. So this old one, neighboring one. And if there was a short between those, we will see what I have the value. And if it's next, nothing. So I think we're good. So this is our 8 pin, 8x cable for uh, CPU power so that's usually uh, where you listen to connect there that would be on your motherboard on a PC you would plug in your power for the CPU and uh, this is basically an extension cord or an adapter over to 4 pin so that's what we're gonna use to make our adapter because we need to supply this donor CPU with 12 volts on the 4th pin a 4th hole out on the edge you're gonna see when we connect it later so we don't need these in the end here, we only need at the most 2 ground and 2 12 volt wires, the other ones. So we can start by cutting off the ends because we really don't need them. I think we do it like this. Made them longer so I can get to to get them out, but it's not really matter. So that one out. Cut that one out. We don't need it. And we now need to cut this one off too. That's our 12 volt. And then um, we're gonna have to do the ground. So now we have an adapter. We can have this mounted there with a the screw and bolt. And this we can drill a hole in the case later and mount it into the case for ground, extra grounding. 
Yeah, as you can see, the CPU is mounted and we have the adapter hooked up here. The CPU is pushing a little bit on the ribbon cable where it bends over, but that's fine. Very little, so it seems to fit snugly. So what's left to do is to mount the heatsink and get the power supply for an ATX1 now because we don't have this connector on the end for the from the original one plus it's only 6 amp there should work I think but uh, the whole point one of the points to switch over now is that we can use a 12 volt rail on a modern power supply instead of the 5 one not too dependent on a heavy 5 volt rail anymore and uh, to add this CPU from what I read in the data sheet is about 34 watts uh, old one, the 350, is about 15 watts. So also one reason I want to reuse the CPU cooler and have to modify the case later to make that fit. So I'm gonna mount the power supply and let me test. Shines right away, that's interesting. And I think we have a picture. Yes, we have an apple logo. And I didn't add the fans because this seating is actually so massive, it takes a while for it to get hot. I have brand new fans for the heat sink that we're gonna mod on later to 60 millimeters. That's gonna be real nice. Well, seems to be shugging on quite fast now. And yes, the time is off, but we don't care. See if we can find the tools, utilities, and we should have the system profile up in 800 now. I hope we have an 800. As you can see here, we have a 800 megahertz G4 now, 256 kilobyte of Elter cache, and a 100 megahertz bus. So the mod is for sure working.